Hi, I'm Brad Rourke, uh, President and CEO of Scotty Resources. Thank you for attending. Of course, I'll be making some forward-looking statements. Uh, be aware of that. And uh, if you have any questions, any crazy thing I say, please come on by the booth and, and, and we can clear that up. Uh, let's talk about this from an investor's point of view and not so much technical. Whether you're thinking of investing and putting your hard-earned dollars in, into one of these junior exploration companies, and whether it's Scotty or anything else, the five boxes I kind of have on that will apply to everybody. And if you can't answer the questions of those five boxes, whichever story, it should give you, that's where your due diligence should, should get to. And, and those boxes would be, are you in the right jurisdiction? There's lots of great minerals everywhere, but there's some countries that right now you'd be pretty scared to put your money in. Infrastructure. What is the infrastructure like if the company's lucky enough to find a, a deposit? It's not a hard stop if, if the infrastructure isn't there, but you'd need to understand what the requirements would be. There'd be a great deposit in the middle of nowhere, and if it costs $2 billion or, or more, you just have to understand that. Uh, a commanding land position. Gone are the days. I, you know, it's been the late 80s, and I, I was on the service side. I did all Murray Pezum staking. And back then, you could have like a little postage stamp and get a drill hole. Market's going to go crazy because, you know, the drill hole was favorable. I think those days are gone. And, you know, basically, I'm the exploration program for a major company. I just don't know which one is yet. So on top of the actual res resource that we hope to find in drill holes, you need to give a, a, a exploration potential upon that. So I, I think gone are the days where if you got something with 500 hectares, even if they find something, it's not going to be, uh, it'll be more difficult to move across uh, the people that are involved and then access to money. And so what I'll go through in my presentation here is I check all those boxes. But if you have other stories, you should really understand those, those, those questions to be asked. So there, there's my little investment advice. So we operate in the Golden Triangle. Uh, just because you guys are here, I'm not going to have to explain how important the Golden Triangle is. Top five places in the world. But what's different and what I think the market misses is I was part of SK Creek Staking Rush. I slept 100 days at SNP. I staked Kames Mines. But even in the heyday when, when SK and, and SNP was going on, we didn't have the buy-in from the real major money like we see now. Newmont alone has put $5 billion in, in, into the area. And I, I get that number because I, I extrapolate the Bruce Jack portion of their a uh, new crest transaction, it'd be about 4.5 billion. But then you also have the Lundines, you have BHP, you have all these big notable pots of money that are setting roots in the area. And from an investment point of view, it should give you confidence as investors to know that it isn't a flash in the pan, is that work is gonna happen in this area for the, the future. And uh, so, so being in the right jurisdiction is uh, important. And, and again, just the money in the last five years is extraordinary, way more than when SK Creek and, and SNP was uh, the flavor of the day. Uh, large land package. I didn't start this company. I took it over. I was an investor in it <laughs> eight years ago. <laughs> but what, what attracted me to it is as I was retired, living in this little town called Smithers, that's where Pritium and Seabridge's operations offices are. And when they were building that $50 million power line up to power the Bruce Jack, I recognized it was going right past the Scotty gold mine, of which I was aware of. And this was a mine that produced a half ounce per ton in the early 80s. And it was economics that shut it down. It didn't, it didn't run out of ore. In fact, they didn't even do property-wide exploration. So that was my opportunity to go up past producer at a half ounce per ton and infrastructure going right by it. My fatal flaw was only 400 hectares, and I had to learn that lesson myself. But I've done a... Huge consolidation. I self-funded the company uh, for the first three years, uh, just my money, my children's money. But as you can see now, I've put together a really enviable land package in the southern end of the Golden Triangle. So there's your scale and even all the, the great drill results I'm going to talk about here in a few moments. It truly is just where you see that little blue dot where and that's where the Scotty gold mine is. But you can see the exploration potential on the other lands that we just can't get to. There's only so much time and money. Uh, so we're concentrated in around that blue dot. Infrastructure. One of our biggest advantages is, is the Golden Triangle is a difficult place to work, but we lack absolutely nothing. You can drive to site. 
That's Scotty Gold in the, in the photograph there. That's the Bruce Jack power line. I also possess a mine permit. I also have seven kilometers of underground workings. There's no debt. So the infrastructure allows us to, my all-in drill cost this year, $315 a meter. And that's a true all-in cost. If you look at some of the other great stories in our area, those costs are a lot higher because they just don't have the blessing that we have. So what that means from an investor point of view is you get more meters for less dollars, which gives you more chances to find something that's going to attract uh, uh, bigger entities that come in. I, I'll make the case that we're already there and we'll get through that in a moment. But that infrastructure piece means there, there, you know, so less money to actually develop something. And the other infrastructure that's not on this is I'm sandwiched between two mills. Bruce Jack Mills just north of me and North America's next mine is going to start pouring gold in the next couple, three months. And that's the Ascot Mill, which is the old premier mill, which is just, I boarded the two of them. This is a picture of Scotty Goldmine. We won't get into this too much. If you want more questions on that, please come see us at the booth. But as you can see, you see Scotty Goldmine on here. And really all I want to show with this slide is Scotty Gold and the Blueberry Contact Zone and how close they are together. Oh, I'm running out of time like I do. Great results at Scotty uh, Goldmine, but please come by. And we don't need to go through the results. We've had some of the best drilling in the industry, and we just completed our fi fifth drill season. This kind of shows you the progression of, of Blueberry. It's an accidental find. We thought we were drilling something else. And then we hit that seven and a half grams over 34 meters, but we didn't understand it. And so what we've did is through the progression of the last few years, and we were a very small company at this time. It was hard to raise $2 million at that time. But as you can see, as we started progressing that along and you look at those intercepts, they're, they're fantastic. I think I have, um, well, I don't think, I know. 15% of all holes ever drilled since every hole I've ever drilled is over 100 gram meters. That's extraordinary. E extraordinary. Again, collective mining's got really, really good holes. But I mean, we're in certainly in the upper echelons of, uh, of uh, coming up with grade. So we started with a vein on surface to a situation now where we've gone from a vein to 2.2 kilometers in strike gone down to 500 meters and it has not showing any reason that it's going to end and basically from not all ore is the same not all gold is the same but what you're looking at here is something that's steeply dipping meaning the deposit's going down if it's on its side you got to leave a lot of rock to, to, to extract that gold but when it's steeply dipping like this and on surface is the ease and the access to that ore should make people excited the metallurgy we've done, we know we're compatible with both the Bruce Jack and the Ascot mill, and they're two different types. One's a gravity flotation mill. We've got about 87% recovery at the Bruce Jack and high as 97% at the Ascot with the cyanide leach program. So uh, we've kind of proven that, that we're good for both those, but we're still acting like we can be a uh, standalone project. And, and with some of the analyst coverage that you see that we're getting now, uh, one of the best things that's happened is Michael Gray just put us on into his universe. That's a, we're very flattered for that. Uh, I think we're the smallest company in his universe. The people involved, I've, uh, I'm proud of that board. Nobody knew each other before we formed that board. I think that's different than a lot of exploration companies. I don't have a cousin or a best friend in there and they're all different skill sets uh, to help me push this along forward. You know, we're a $50 million market cap. Uh, quite respectable. I mean, we come from when I took it over, it was worth $600,000. But we've held in better than most people. And I think that ha has to do with the quality of the investors. I've got four individuals that own just under 10%, very recognizable names. Eric Sprott, Kevin Jennings, uh, Gold 2000 out of, out of Switzerland and another private individual. But we also have Carlos Avelli, Ross Beatties. Uh, he's going to be up to about 5% of the company now. I'm in the middle of a financing right now. And he basically took 50% of it um, and then existing shareholders. But if you look at that stock chart from an investor, so let's not talk about how great I am, and, but what, do you, what answers do you need to ask, right? The question is, is that we're in the right jurisdiction. We have mills on either side of us. They're making money. What's the value of an ounce of gold in the ground, right? What, really, that's a, it's cr pretty much that simple. And then how do we act, use your money? I mean, we've been drilling for five years. Uh, you can see that the money goes into the ground, and, and uh, so it's a waiting game. 
Like, if you think this company is worth $50 million, uh, well, fine. Uh, but, you know, we're, I can see, I have never said more than we're on the pathway to a million ounces. I can look you in the eye and I can explain it to you. I'm not a geologist, but I'm targeting 2 million ounces. And then the analysts are even saying more than that. But I can, I can technically show you why I believe there's 2 million ounces. And I'm very close to telling you how many meters it's going to uh, take for me to drill that off. So it's good. There's value there. And uh, that's my time. I uh, wish you all good luck. We do have a booth over there and, and I'd love to ask questions. It's really hard to tell a story in 15 minutes, right? And especially when you have everybody saying the same stuff. So please come on by, see me. It's a good bet. And uh, you're not going to find a guy who works harder than me. Have a great day and uh, good luck out there.